Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the tutorial series. Today, we're going to be installing not only LSPDFR, but we are going to be installing every GTA 5 mod that I have listed below in the comments and that I use personally in my LSPDFR series within GTA 5. So first of all, no, we do not go online with any of this. It's imperative that you do not try to do that. Why? You will get banned. And don't say that you won't because you will. Okay, guys, before we get started, I want this to be very, very, very clear that if you have any ASI script they're going to be using in your Grand Theft Auto 5, I want you to make sure that you have the current version of script hook. And inside of script hook, you'll see these three little uh, files in the bin folder. And in your Grand Theft Auto 5 installation, you must make sure those three there are in there. D input. Uh, let's double check D input. Where's it at? Right here. D input 8.dll. The native trainer. It doesn't matter. It comes with the script hook. But make sure, most importantly, you have a script hook 5.dll. If you don't, you're not going to have anything else. I hope you guys enjoy the tutorial. Um, so first things first. We cleared that. And uh, I want you to know that I already have a Grand Theft Auto 5 shortcut here. When I open this up, you're going to see under my Steam apps, I do have a Steam. Oh, why did I do that? common in here is all my games right here you go so here's the original the, the one that i have named mp for uh multiplayer oh we don't need grand theft auto 4 i don't know why i even have that installed i need to uninstall it today uh five five mp and five tutorial so i have made copies yes these are 60 something gig 61.4 gigabytes each so i watched my last uh tutorial and I said, you know what? I kind of went a little too fast. So today we're going to do things very slow. This video might take a little bit, but I think we'll get maximum effect out of it if we do this together. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to open up my Grand Theft Auto 5 uh, folder so you can pause this video and compare it with your current one. Or if you have any issues, this is the one that I currently use right here the one I currently use to um, uh, do my LSPDFR series. Don't pay attention to the mod mod store folder. I, I need to get rid of those. I don't need either one of those, actually. Let's get rid of them. Oh, actually, I keep the mod in there because I just... Ah, fuck it. We're getting rid of it. There we go. Uh, X360CE is a Xbox 360 controller emulator that I use for my G27 uh, so you you may not have that folder as well, but just pause the video, have a look over and uh, make sure that everything in there is the same as you. If you're having issues, the biggest one is people don't have the open four dot ASI that is needed to load in your mods from the open four. We're going to be using today. Okay. Sound good. Yes. All right, cool. So we have established the number one rule to uh, modding anything in a Grand Theft Auto series is we make backup folders. Yes, I have three different installations. The one I currently use, that's the vanilla one I called MP for multiplayer. So all I have to do now is go up here and, and rename this to single player. And when I do that, MP can become the normal one. So whenever I go run Grand Theft Auto 5 through Steam, it will just pop up the version with no mods in it. There's the vanilla installation. Again, if you need to pause the screen and look at that and make sure this is where you want to start with, that would be a good idea. So we're going to be doing the tutorial today. Not a big deal. First of all, I don't want to get mixed up. So I'm going to put this back into MP and I'm going to make sure that this one tutorial is the one we're using today so I can verify it is working when we get these mods installed. So there we have it. Let's get started. I'm going to make this uh, a little bit smaller. No need, you know, for it to be so massive. No need for it to be so massive. And we'll start here in the GTA 5 mods folder I have created, which is all the downloads of everything that I have used and that you, you are pretty much well aware of. Biggest one is going to be LSPDFR. Let's do it. I use 7-Zip. I get a lot of shit for it. I like 7-Zip. It's simple. Uh, I have nothing against uh, WinRAR. I used to use WinRAR all the time. 
Seven Zip never had a thing pop up on me constantly and tell me to do stuff. I just right click, I go to Seven Zip, and I extract it. Once I do that, we have created a folder up here because that's what happens whenever it extracts that uh, the files into its own folder. Here it is. So we don't need licenses. We don't need any of that. And we don't need an SDK. If you download that version, you have an SDK. That's not going to be so good. So what we have here is a startup.rphs. And this is what you're going to learn uh, is what the rage hook will load in when you do that. Okay. So I'll, I'll t we'll, get, we'll get to that in a little bit. So we need LSPDFAR plugins and all the above. So we're going to take all of this. And we're going to move this, which we're just co moving it into the, oh, shit. <laughs> Almost made a big mistake there. Let's open up the actual Grand Theft Auto 5 folder that we're, we're modding. And uh, we take all of this stuff, move it over. There's already a file with this in there. Yes and yes. Okay. So, yeah, copy it over. We don't need the licenses folder, like I said. You now have a working LSPD far. Now, when you first, if you would have, this is 0.1e. If you're on an older version of LSPD far, you may notice in the startup.rphs load plugin LSPD first response.dll was not in there. What this startup RPHS does is anything that's in there says to load plugin, it will do that when Rage Hook first loads into Grand Theft Auto 5. So that's very important that we um, we have all of our uh, plugins that we're going to use loaded up in here. And I'm even going to show you how to install uh, FinCone's uh, script today, too. So we have LSPD4 installed. It should work as, uh, as, as, as needed. All I did was just on it, you know, extract everything out of the O1E, and we took everything except for the license folder, threw it in there, boom. What I do... And I've already done this with this over here, LSPDFR, is the rage hook plugin hook.exe is what you have to run. If you read the README, it tells you that's what you have to double click in order to play LSPDFR. You don't start it with Grand Theft Auto 5 the way you normally would. You would do this. So to make things easy, right click, send to desktop create shortcut. I'm not going to do it because I already have it right here. And it's going to call it rage hook plugin hook. And I just renamed that to LSPDFR. So when I want to start the game using that rage hook, I have LSPDFR right there. So let's uh, let's do exactly that. We're double clicking the LSPDFR, and it's going to say this program was made in hope that it would be useful. Blah 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 blah. Just say yes. It's your disclaimer. And then we're going to see the rage hook guy pop up, which is going to tell us, "Hey, I'm loading the rage plugin hook." And I'm waiting to talk to Grand Theft Auto 5, which it will do very shortly, which is basically the uh, social club login. And it takes a little bit of time, you know. Even if you have a decent PC, this stuff takes a, t a little bit of time to start up. It's not the end of the world. It just is what it is. So there you go. The launch requires your attention. Not really. It's always going to tell you that. And it is loading... Rockstar Games Social Club. Beautiful. Now remember, in that startup.rphs, we told we had we double checked and made sure in there that line said to load LSPDFAR's plugin on start. So that's what it's going to do. So still, you know, loading, taking its time here. There we go. Launching the game finally. There's that wonderful sound that we know of GTA 5 as it loads. Rockstar logo. Like I said, I'm doing this all in real time to show you guys that this is working exactly. Build 372 online 1.27 there at the bottom. We want to make sure our, our plugin hooks and everything are, are going to be uh, working with those versions. Those version numbers that pop up there in the very beginning are important. Okay, so we're just going to go over here to story mode and we're going to launch it, you see. But notice... I did not start Grand Theft Auto 5 through Steam um, uh, or, or the shortcut that has the letter 5 on it, you know, the Roman numeral 5, the logo, the icon, whatever you want to call it. You must start this through the Rage Hook plugin. I can't express that enough. If you don't do that, you will not have the mod.
There's the ding dong. What that means is verified plugin loaded. The plugin loaded from the LSPD first response.dll was loaded. That's a good thing. You want to hear that. And you want to see that text at the bottom right that says Rage Plugin Hook version, blah, 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 blah. That tells you that Rage Hook is indeed running with Grand Theft Auto V. So just a few more seconds here, and we should be at Franklin's house with the aunt telling us about her feet. She's always like, she going to say it? You going to say it today? No, she's not here today. Son of a bitch. Well, we know that we installed LSPDFR, correct? Hey, Reverend. Hey, Reverend. Because we have the shields. What are, what are shields you're asking? On the map, we have these shields that are the police departments, right? That's how we know we did what we needed to do. You see how easy it was to install LSPDFR? It was very, very simple. All we did was just follow the instructions by moving everything except for that uh, licenses folder over. I'm, we're going to go there just to make sure everything's working. And I want you guys to get in a good habit of always double checking your installation of Grand Theft Auto V before you start. Don't, don't start throwing a bunch of mods in there at one time like I'm going to do today. I want you to put one in at a time, go test it, make sure it works before you just throw a bunch in there and screw up your game, you know? Oh, shit! Oh, shit. Shut up. So we run over here, and there we go. The script is working. I'm taxi. calling for a taxi, and we can verify LSPD far is working. So that's good news for us, right? I know there was somebody who said they don't like the fact that I don't show this part of my LSPD far episodes. And here you go. You get to see it today. So yay. Okay, it's loading those textures in behind him. We can choose whoever. Who cares? We'll choose a car. Whatever. Come on. There we go. Police cruiser will work for us today. And notice how we have clear uh, front lights. We don't have the amber lights. We're going to install that mod today, so don't worry. It's going to look like a Crown Vic when we're done with it. And we have the default siren. And it works. Right? Okay, first thing is first. I want you guys to go to your settings. I want you to go down here to um, your notifications and phone alerts must be set on. If they are not on, you will not get call outs. That is the number one thing. That's why you're not getting call outs. You can hit X to force a call out and then hit Y to accept it. So there's a pursuit over here, blah, 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 blah. We're not playing LSPD far, Jeff. I want to, but we're not. So we're gonna get out of the game. And with that said, we're going to install more mods. Yes. But we can confirm LSPD far is working. Correct. Yes. Somebody on Skype is sending me messages. So what's next? Let's do. Uh, do, 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 do. We got tons to do. First things first. Actually, you know what we should do? We should install uh, FinCone's um, police radar. So let's do that. Uh, yep. So you're going to get his uh, police ra or his uh, police radio. I'm sorry, not radar. His police radio, and you'll, you know, unzip it. And then in the contents, you're going to have police radio folder, police radio DLL, and police radio.ini. Okay. So we're going to take all those, and we're going to copy those. I'm going to copy them because I keep a backup of that version since I'm beta testing for him. And in the plugins folder of here is where we're going to put this. We'll hit paste. Boom. Now, you might go, it's not working. It's not working. Well, the startup.rphs that we were talking about earlier, we need to have the same kind of line. We don't need the quotation marks. That's kind of a, a thing that a lot of people think you need, but you don't actually have to have it. We'll put load plugin, and we're just going to look in the plugins and look how this works. See how LSPD first response to DLL in there, is in there? We want police radio.dll. So we'll put police radio. DLL. And a lot of issues I find is that whenever people are downloading new mods, we'll hit save on that. They're um, getting a startup.rphs file in there and they're throwing it over there and they're they're just overriding one that uh, used to be in there that had all the, the correct information in it. In fact, you might get one that's blank and it's not even loading LSPDFR. So anytime you're installing a mod that has an, a startup.rphs in it, double check to make sure it's not you, you already have one and you're happy with it. You know, don't, don't go overriding stuff you don't need. So 
we have installed the police radio. That was simple enough, right? We're gonna get we're gonna get to more difficult stuff. Yeah, we're gonna get to more difficult stuff. All right. So let's say amber parking lights. Okay, we we want that. Um, we want that Stanier to have those realistic looking amber parking lights. Um, and this is an option for parking lights on at night, which will is a visual settings uh, dot dat file we will deal with in a little bit. Readmes are very important, very important. We're we oh, I oh, even during this I'm gonna bring up the readme every time to reinstate the fact that we need to read these. Yes. Now a problem that um that you will see is that Sergeant Kano decided he didn't want to tell people how to install this correctly through that. So what do we have to do? Well, we have to get on the internet. Lucky us. And Sergeant Kenya, I don't know why you did that, but you're you're just creating nothing but problems by not including instructions on how to get something um, in your readme. Oh, that's great. Website's temporarily unavailable. Well, this is this is a big issue with uh, authors that do not put that information in there. Why they do that, I don't know. I think it's just experiencing a lot of traffic right now is what it looks like. So it's a Grand Theft Auto V um, other modification. It's probably going to be vehicle modification or textures. So we're going to get over to here. We're going to go searching. Oh my God, their website's broken today. Jesus. Well, we're going to use the... No, we're going to use the search bar. We're going to call... What do they call that? He's calling these amber parking lamps or whatever the hell. Amber parking lights. Yeah. Amber parking. We're going to search for that. And here it is. By Sergeant Kenyo. Let's double click or just click on that and a double. But there's the file. And here's the installation right here. Sergeant Kenyo, you needed to put that in there. You just created so many issues for yourself. But I mean, I'm sure these people down here right here says, how do you do this? How do you do this? Where's the vehicle's RPF? Uh Right here. You're going to need open four for this. All the YTDs. In fact, I'm going to take this. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to paste it in here. There we go. That way we can see it ourselves and save that readme. That's the readme it should have been in the beginning. And here at the bottom. We're going to have to start open four. Now, I want you to make sure you have your ASIs. Remember in the beginning, I told you it's imperative that Open 4 installs those ASIs into Grand Theft Auto 4, or 5, sorry. We're going to double-click Run Open 4. Here's Open 4. You're probably used to this little screen. We're going to go Windows, Grand Theft Auto 5. It's going to start up and load the game contents. Now, you'll notice in here we don't have the ASI loaded in here. We got to do that ourselves. We'll go to Tools. We're going to go to ASI Manager. It's going to open the ASI manager. Here we go. ASI loader is installed. Open4.asi is not installed. If you do not install this, you are not going to be able to load anything from Open4, and you're going to get an error that says that uh, your game data is corrupt and it will crash GTA 5. So that's as simple as, as that gets. So let's do the amber parking lamps. Yes, let's do that. So. Here we go. All the YTD files go into vehicles RPF. He does not tell you where the vehicles RPF folder is, but I am going to teach you. You're going to get used to the installation of Grand Theft Auto 5 over time, but for now, you're going to know that you're going to be dealing with a lot of x64e.rpf. Okay, it's a rage package file. Anything that we have to modify after DLCs is going to be in the update folder, but we'll get to that and you'll see how that works. We'll double click on the x64e.rpf. And what we're going to do is go to the levels, GTA 5, vehicles.rpf. Now, Sergeant Kenyo should have said that's where it's located, but he decided not to. He assumes that you're a modder and you know how to do everything. So here you go. It's x64.erpf, levels, GTA 5, vehicles RPF. Double click it and boom. This is very similar to what we were used to in the old open four days and the uh, spark days of a whole list of, of things. So we know that we're going to be replacing in the parking lamps. Um, we have police 
and police four, sheriff and taxi. Or these are the YTDs, right? So what are we going to do? We can, uh, we're simply going to just take these guys and move them in there. No, we have to go into edit mode. You click on edit mode. It'll say while in editing mode, all changes will automatically be saved. We say yes. Now we just take these and we just move these babies right on over. So that's all you have to do. And you go, well, Jeff, how, how do I know that it did that? It's very simple. We're going to open up one of the YFT files. Let's go down here to the police. Police, police, police. There it is. Double click the YFT. It's going to open up a little model viewer. And when we move it around, check it out. We can see, oh, we can see we have yellow parking lamps now. Excellent. And the sheriff one is supposed to, but I'm pretty sure he forgot to do it on the sheriff one because I have had no uh, luck with the sheriff one myself. Let's see. No, it worked. Okay. Well, I need to go back and make sure that I put that one in there or it's a new version and he updated the sheriff ones now. That's cool. It's a reason why I don't use the sheriff ones so many uh, times in, in my uh, episodes because they don't have the amber parking lamps, but the new version has that and the taxi did too. So it's, it's good practice to double check each one of these uh, YFTs and just make sure that it worked out right. See, there they are. We have yellow parking lamps. Excellent. So we did our first, uh, our first big modification. We can hit uh, edit mode and turn it off. What I would do is I'd always just close out uh, open four and then go fire your game up and double check and make sure it works. Okay, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not gonna open up Grand Theft Auto 5 every single time until we get everything installed and we're gonna go double check and make sure it worked, okay? I want you guys to get in the habit of going and testing your Grand Theft Auto 5 game installation um, in game before you go and just keep installing mods. But for the sake of the tutorial, we're just going to keep on a moving. So delete that stuff. Don't need that anymore. Let's get to the fire department. We're going to, uh, this gives you uh, the option of a, uh, LAFD, uh, fire truck essentially. And you can see here, we have the red version or the yellow version, even accompaniment with some screenshots, which I really love whenever modders do that. So you can look at it and go, oh yeah, I really like that. That's what I want. Let's say we want the yellow one and uh, always open up our readme. If we look here in the English, it tells us here, open four. So we're gonna open, open four. I just wanted to show you guys that it's okay to close out the, you know, the window of open four when we're modding here, so. Hopefully it uh, it, does, it makes a little more sense. So with that said, we can just go right into edit mode here in a minute, but let's make sure we get to the right directory. I, I'm in a habit of going to the directory and then hitting edit mode. So in here we have update X64 DLC patch day 3NG, and you're going to see this one a lot. So instead of the X64E that we're used to, because that's the default one that we're that you go to to um, to put a lot of the vehicle texture mods and stuff in, and I think when we get vehicle mods eventually, that's where they're going to go. Uh, you, you're going to get used to going in the DLC packs. And what we have to do is go to update. So if Rockstar updates the game like this, we're in here. We click the X64. We click DLC packs. We're just following the readme. Patch day 3NG is, an, is, a, is one that I'm used to. Uh, DLC RPF X64 levels. GTA 5, remember, this is a similar looking kind of directory we had before, and there's the vehicles.rpf for this update. So, if Rockstar said, um, we forgot to do something on a fire truck when you want to update it, they're going to throw it in the update X64 DLC packs, and then depending on which version of that, you can see here at the very top, they went with, uh, what one was it, patch day 3NG, new generation. So, that's a little bit of the decisions behind them with their updates. So if they wanted to update something on the fire truck, they do it through their update. So if we're trying to modify it, we can't do it on the base level. We need to do it on one that's been updated by Rockstar themselves. So here we are um, in that vehicle's RPF. So we want the yellow version of the truck. Here they are, fire truck YTD and the high YTD. Remember, we just want to go in here, click edit mode, say yes. And we want to take these guys and just throw them on in there. And it might take a minute. You know, it's a little bit bigger. These texture files are probably higher uh, quality and stuff. So it takes a minute there. Uh, and then we can double check our work by going here to the fire truck. 
YFT, double click it, and we should see a yellow truck, which we do. I've been having a really weird uh, thing with this mod in particular is the fact that it flashes orange sometimes. So I don't know what that's about. Take it out of edit mode and we can move on to our next mod. Yeah, see, that was pretty easy. And if you want the red version, you could do the same thing right there. Pretty simple, right? I think so. All right, moving along, moving along. Let's do Old Spice's lifelike textures. This is what gives you the FedEx trucks and all that kind of fun stuff. And it gives you a nice uh, option. You can install whatever you want. You have location one and you have location two. So when you see he has these split for a reason, he has two separate readmes. This readme says right here, installation, this is that directory we're going to be in that X64E that I talked about earlier. But if you look in location two, it's going to say that we have to go over here to the update 64. You guessed it. Patch day 3NG DLC RPF, blah, 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 blah. So it's imperative we read each readme just so we know where the locations are. So I know where the locations of this is just from doing it a while. And in here, he even tells you what he did. So navigate to that X64 ERPF levels GTA 5 vehicle RPF. You're going to get used to this one because this is basically where the CD images uh, vehicles or model, whatever the crap was, whatever it was back in Grand Theft Auto 4 with the list of cars um, was located. So we don't have to, you might be saying, oh, I'm all the way here in this DLC. What am I going to do? Just click on GTA 5 there. We'll be back at the main root folder. Let's go down to X64E and do this one first. Remember levels, GTA 5, vehicles RPF. Yeah. And there's the list. So we just click her into edit mode, and then we can have our fun. Airbus. This is the bus. We double click the bus, and we can say he went from, this is the two new buses that we're going to get if we put these in there. So we just slide those babies in there. There they go. And you can see the change on the size because the textures, uh, the bison. Uh, you can even look at it and see what he what he did. He's Turner Construction Company and AHBA. And we'll uh, take those guys. Make sure that I want to make sure that's not selected. I don't want to throw a JPEG in there. Uh, throw those in there. And each time you do this, when you're in edit mode, it's automatically saving this. So you guys don't have to worry about it. Blimp. This will give you the Goodyear blimp. We'll throw those in there. Burrito. As you can see, we're just so on and so forth going through all of this, right? If you wanted all this crap, you could do it yourself. Pony. There's nothing in there. And you might go, well, there's nothing in there. Well, look in the, in the readme. He said right here, Pony, he doesn't have anything in there yet because he's he's constantly working on this uh, mod. And that's how a lot of modders work. Uh, the Pounder, there we go. This gives you the FedEx truck and the Hertz truck or the Penske truck. Uh, we'll throw those guys in there. It's kind of, it's easy to get lost here. I understand. Trailers, you know, throw those guys in there. And, and basically when you throw these in there, utility truck, there they are. We're going to go in here and just double check our work. So. Like I said, we were in the trailers, trailers 2.ytd. Let's go down here to trailers 2, YFT. The YTD is just the texture dictionary, and then this is the actual object. So we're going to open that up, and when we do, ba -ba, YRC Freight, yellow company. They, they changed over to yellow roadway. They merged. So as you can see, we have a realistic uh, texture set for those uh, trailers now. Very cool. Let's take it out of edit mode. I just do that, you know, out of habit. I think it's a good habit to have, so you're not always in edit mode screwing things up. Location two, say you want to do these things. Do the same thing I just did. Just click here on GTA 5. Go to your update. Go to your 64, your DLC packs, patch day 3NG, and DLC, and uh, 64. My, okay. Let's let's go back a little bit here. I'm sorry. The it, these these get a little out outrageous sometimes. So here you go. This is the one we want to do. Double check your readme fo folder before you start go flying through everything. GTA 5 update. X64 DLC packs. Patch day 3NG is what we did. Uh, yeah, DLC. Oh, I did something totally different in there. No, I, I did this right. Okay. X64 levels. GTA 5 vehicles i know it's hidden guys i know it's a long way in there it's a bitch edit mode hit yes boxville usa let's throw them in there Shweep, boom and uh let's do the other one mule throw those guys in there mule two there's nothing in there rental bus move those in there so 
Let's make sure we did it right. Let's go down here to the rental bus and just make sure, it, you know, you can check each individual one if you want to. It's your choice. I'm going to open up the YFT and look at that. We have a Hertz rent a car now instead of the uh, default one. So we took it out of edit mode. Let's go back to the root directory and let's install a different mod. Yeah. Let's do the uh, trainer. That's it's simple enough, right? This is the uh, simple trainer. Not the one that uh, ships with uh, the script hook. And uh, let's go to the trainer. There it is. And all we have is a trainer V.ASI and a trainer V.INI. So those two right there, if we if we look at the readme, we could we would know what we're supposed to do with that. But in this case, I already know how to do this. We're just going to take these two, and they go in your root directory of GTA 5. So there you go. That's all you have to do. And then the INI, you can change everything you want and, and customize it. Uh, make sure you you know those keys are disabled and stuff like that so you don't have accidentally spawning stuff in traffic. Uh, continuing on, let's do Xenolit Additional Car Controls. I use this on my Xbox 360 controller. Let's extract that guy out. And inside here we have these, an INI and an ASI. So the readme tells us to throw it into our main directory. Watch. We go to installation. It's all this version of script took five, and he even gives you the link to the uh, way to make sure you have the, the latest version of script took five. Remove the previous version of the mod, extract contents of the zip. We did. And uh, if you want A as a handbrake, tell to mod it in the INI file. He gives an INI file to, so we can um, make sure that that is different. And he even says, blah, 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 blah. I'm working on this. So pretty simple stuff. All we have to do is just go to where the GTA 5.exe is located. And where's that? You guessed it, right there in the main one. So we just take the INI and the ASI, throw it in the main directory. We can even go in the INI and we can say, using alternative handbrake equals one means that I am using the A button, which is nice to have and make sure that that's working. So when we do that, we'll um, now be able to use the X button on the uh, controller to do our uh, blinker, to, to be the modification button for the blinkers and stuff. And if you don't know how to use the, the mod, here's all of everything you need to know. So there's all the buttons and everything. Keep those in mind. So pretty easy to install that one. That one was just uh, a directory kind of uh, deal. No turbulence mod. Um, you know, if you want to do it, it's your choice. We're going to do it real quick. Extract it. Um, if that, if the, if the turbulence annoys you when flying, uh, we're going to go here and open the readme. Remember to back up all files before modding, blah, 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 blah. I always say this to you guys, too. It's very true. So open four. We already have this guy open. Let's navigate to update, update RPF, common, data, and enable the edit mode. Hit yes. And then all we have to do is move the handling.meta in. So we just go handling.meta, boom. And you can see that we replaced it because it's no longer encrypted. It's just a compressed file. So once we're done with that, we take it out of edit mode. That was simple, right? So let's go back and keep going. Brinks mod. This gives you those Brinks uh, truck mods. And, and it's just, it's the same kind of thing. You're getting used to this same old, same old. Go to this X64 ERPF levels, GTA 5 vehicles.rpf over and over again, right? You're gonna give me, you're gonna be doing that a lot. So let's do that real quick. X64 levels, GTA 5, vehicles RPF. And there we are again. Just replace the stockade. All we had to oh, for, almost forgot. Edit mode first. Yes. Take this two stock the two stockades, throw them in, and we can double check and make sure that they are indeed. And it doesn't matter. You can still uh, check these. Um, you, should, you can still check these even in edit mode. So it's not a big deal. So stockade YFT. Double click it. And we have Brinks. Yay, it worked. Take it out of edit mode just for the sake of all things. GTA 5 jet textures. Let's do that one. That'll give you the realistic uh, jets at the airport. Um, and here in the readme, if we open it up, what's it going to tell us? It's going to tell us installation X64E levels GTA 4. Just exactly where we were. Exactly where we are right now. That's why I just throw it back into edit mode. Say, yeah, jets. Throw them in there. Boom. Boom. Take it out of edit mode. You don't have to, but I do. Just out of uh, out of habit. And then we'll double check and make sure it worked. I mean, that's really all you do. Jet YFT. We'll probably have like a Qantas. Yes, we do. So we know that that worked. 
Excellent. Beautiful. Let's move on. So then a lot of these law enforcement improvements. This is a big one. A lot of people ask me like, oh, how did you do this? How did you do this? You know, this this one has a lot of different mods inside of it. See, you have you can you can do each one you want to be sure to read the read me. Uh, I used um, the one that's called cops back on the beat. What that does is it changes your pop cycle uh, and pop groups out to where police are patrolling the streets of Los Santos again in your in your single player. So if you want that, open the read me and have a look. See at the navigate to the following path. OK, so pretty simple. All we need to do is go to the update, update RPF. You guessed it. Let's go here to the main directory, update, update RPF. We'll go to the common. We'll go to the data. And then we go to levels, GTA 5. And it says inside of there, we have right here. There it is. We have pipes, pop cycle and pop groups. Or so, sorry, we only have pop cycle DAT there. So let's just go to edit mode. Hit yes. We want pop cycle dat. Throw it in there. There we go. It's no longer encrypted. Take it out of edit mode. That's fine. And then we want to go to the other one. It's going to be the update uh, in a different spot. So for the pop groups, let's go to back to GTA 5. Let's go to update. Update RPF. Let's go to the X64. Let's go to levels. We're just following the, uh, the instructions here. GTA 5. And here we have the pop groups. So a YMT folder or file. So edit mode. Yes. Popgroups.ymt. Throw it in there. Booyah. It's no longer no longer encrypted. So we know we did we did right. So take it out of edit mode and let's go back to the main directory. Excellent. So now we have police back on the road. Uh, another one you have I, I'm not changing these out. These are all your your guys's I picked and choose. I've only used cops back on the beat. Um, and I've only used um uh, the sheriff two improvements. This gives you the white sheriff uh, SUV. If you were like, Hey, how'd you get a, a, a all white SUV? Very simple. Read me text is here. It says to go into the X 64 levels, blah, 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 blah. We had to do the patch day three and G one. So let's do it. Update X 64 DLC packs patch day three and G DLC X 64 you guessed it. Levels, GTA 5, vehicles, RPF. There it is. Sheriff 2. Let's go down here where Sheriff 2 is and open him up. And he, we'll, he'll be black and white, as we can see right there. So we go to edit mode. Hit yes. Take these two little files here. Throw them over in here. Boom. Take it out of edit mode. Yeah, or you can keep it in there. Don't matter. Double click it. Open again. Look at that. All white. That was a simple one, right? Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Let's go back to our main directory. So I'm not going to mess with that too much. That's pretty much choose, pick and choose what you guys want out of that. Let's get to the big one. The big one. The big, big, big one. And that one's going to be um, doing a, uh, a siren. Okay. So the smart siren, the code three VCon siren, uh, the smart siren, I really like it. There's just a lot I don't like about it. And that is the ambulance sirens are horrible. So let's just show you how to do the VCon. Well, Let's yeah, let's just show you how to do the VCon one. All the sirens are going to be the same as far as installations go, and they are totally different than what we were just doing. So yeah, we have to learn more. Let's go to the Code Three VCon folder, and in here in the README file, it's going to tell you something little confusing. Alongside this README, blah 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 blah, it says right here in Open Four, go to the X64 folder, then Audio SFX Resident RPF, and then inside of there will be 16 AWC files. So I'm going to show you exactly what he's talking about. It's not worded the best, but he tried. So we want to go to our main directory, which we're at right here in open four. We want to go to audio. So to do that, we want to go to the X64 folder audio and then SFX. And then we look for the resident RPF file. There it is right there. What we're going to do with the resident is double click it. And now we are in here. So, now we go into edit mode, but we're not going to throw anything in this vehicles folder or anything like that wave files into here because you can see it doesn't make sense. It only knows AWCs. So it, what it does is it interprets that information by a vehicles.oac file. So all we have to do is right click out here in the open and go to import open formats. Once we do that, we'll get a folder like this uh, and let's go to the desktop. Let's go to the GTA 5 mods. 
Let's go to the Code3Vcon folder, and you can see there is the vehicles.oac file. That is important. Don't mess with the vehicles folder, just the vehicles.oac. Hit open. We get this information right here. It says import files from this. That's the directory. Hit OK. It's going to convert all of those WAV files over to the AWC format, and everything's good to go. Once you're done with that, take it out of edit mode. Now we have a new siren. We have the VCon. The VCon siren only changes things that um, are the, the Yelp and the phaser and stuff. The whale is still the default, unfortunately. I really wish they would have a, a different whale, but um, a lot of guys that are making these mods are having this issue where the, f the files are... Um, or the loop is too long. And then if it's too long and GTA five can't figure that out, it will just mute all of the sirens. So that is the main issue there with that. So we had, we installed a siren. That wasn't too bad, right? We just kind of followed along the readme, and, uh, and knowing the, uh, the way that the, the game is, um, in the, all the directories are kind of helps. It really does. So let's go along here. I'm um, trying to think of anything. Okay. Improve train. What does this do? This uh, gives you multiple engines and longer trains. All right, let's double click this guy open. And in here we have improved train. A lot of files in here. Looks like it's gonna be in, it's gonna be crazy, but it's not really. Let's open up the install notes and just follow along here. Make sure to back everything up. Yes, we will. I really hope uh, you students are doing that. Uh, open common RPF. So let's go to the root directory and there's the common RPF. It's a rage package file. We're gonna double click that guy open common data. And then inside of there, we want to go to levels, GTA 5. And in here, at the bottom, we're going to have the train information, the train tracks there. So he wants us right here to replace the train tracks XML with a 1UC fit. Meaning, do we want multiple engines, single engines, train speeds and stoppings at stations, uh, if you want to change that stuff too. It's it's kind of your, your choice. That's the train tracks information. But the trains, I like the multiple engines, uh, and then we're going we're gonna to use that one. So... Let's go into edit mode. Hit yes. We're going to throw that guy over here. There she goes. And it's been replaced because you can see it's no longer encrypted. Excellent. Let's uh, go back out here and say train speeds and stopping at stations. Say we want normal speeds. We don't want a faster speed um, thing. So this is right here. Replace the train tracks XML file with one that you see fit as well. So what does that mean? Train tracks are right here. The XML is right there. We're still in edit mode. We're just going to take this guy, throw it in there. Look at that. It's no longer encrypted because we changed it out. Take it out of edit mode. We don't need that in there anymore. Now we just go install all of the textures. So that's pretty simple to do. It's in the X64E. Uh, it levels GTA 5 RPF, vehicles RPF. The one we've been doing all along. You're starting to get used to it now, right? X64E levels GTA 5 vehicles RPF. There it is. If we go to freight right here, freight YFT, and we open it up, we're going to see what we're changing. See how it's uh, the default Los Santos one? We're going to be changing that with a Union Pacific uh, train. So actually, we want to do all of these guys except for this guy. So we'll take, let's go boom down to, the, we want all these. We're going to take this guy into edit mode. Hit yes. And we're going to take all these and throw them in there. And it's going to replace them all. So when we go to the freight YFT now. Check it out. Bam. Union Pacific. So. We, we simply changed out the textures on the trains and it's much more realistic and it's longer and all that good stuff. So yay, back to the GTA five main directory. Last but not least, we are going to do, well, actually let's do the better police weapon loadouts. Cause this one's kind of crazy. Um, let's do that one. Yeah. So we just going to change out the loadouts.meta file and it's going to be pretty simple actually. When we look at the installation, it says to go to the R update RPF common data AI. So it's different. That's why we're going to do it. So here we are in the main directory, update. We're going to go to common after update RPF. I'm sorry. Then common data AI. In here, we have loadouts.meta. See it right there? Easy as pie. Edit mode. Yes, sir. Move the meta file over. Look at that. We're done. So now the police, uh, when they show up, they'll have tactical um, weapons. So they'll have flashlights on their shotguns and stuff like that. And that's what it basically says right there. They have limited ammo and the primary weapons. Uh, and it just makes it much more realistic. All police have shotguns, MP5s, and carbons have flashlights. And you can see so on and so forth. It just makes it much more realistic. Uh, and the AI, when they show up on scene, they'll have a much more realistic loadout. So I really like that mod. It's a very, very good one. 
Not going to worry about the Bro Cops California Highway Patrol mod. That just changes some textures, and you're already learning how to change out textures, and it's pretty simple. Just follow the uh, follow the yellow brick road. Follow the uh, read me. So let's do the last but not least, the biggest one, the improved spotlight in Corona. Let's make sure we do this correct because a lot of people say they're getting yellow lights and all this stuff, and I don't know why they're getting that because I've never had an issue with it. Let's open it up and have a look. Improved spotlight in Corona version 1.3. Yes. We look at the sh uh, screenshots. We see how beautiful it is. Drunk Police did a great job on it. Awesome job. Let's open up the, uh, the TXT. And right here, it tells us how to do everything for brighter LED lights. Use open four, replace the visual settings, DAT, and GTA 5 update, update RPF common data with the one supplied. That's all we are doing. And then you must replace the graphics YTD. I think a lot of people aren't doing that. So let's make sure we do this all correctly. We got this, right? We can do this. So let's do this. Once again, we're going to go to um, update, update RPF. We're going to go to common. We're going to go to data. And inside of there is going to be the visual settings dot dat here at the bottom. Right there. There she is. And we're going to go to edit mode. Yes. Take that visual settings dot dat. Throw it in there. Beautiful. And now what we have to do is replace the graphics dot YTD in the X64 a RPF. I know this is getting confusing. Don't worry. Just just follow along in the read me and you'll be good to go. We've been doing the X64E all day, but this one goes in the X64A. So let's open up that guy and follow along here by going uh, the way that uh, he wants us to go. He wants us to go X64A RPF textures. So we go to the textures folder here, and inside the textures folder, we're going to have graphics.ytd. There it is right there. Edit mode still open. Let's take that graphics YTD, throw it in there. Boom. Let's take it out of editing mode, and we are done. That was pretty simple. I'm trying to see if there's any other mod I really want to show you guys other than that. Uh, I think we've and we've pretty much covered it all. The Maverick mod is another texture mod. We're just changing out textures. Okay, most of you guys probably want the uh, Spotlight mod, so I'm going to tell you how you do that really fast. And um, you just you know whenever you get that um, mod, it tells you to make a scripts folder if you don't have one already. Here we go. Searchlight.cs and searchlight.ini. Don't pay attention to the backup folder I made before. Um, that goes into a scripts folder. If you don't have a scripts folder, you must create one. So it's not too difficult. You make it a scripts folder. You throw the searchlight CS and the searchlight.ini in there, and you're good to go. Uh, for that to work, it won't work unless you have the scripthook.net. Now, I know we have scripthook v, you know, scripthook 5, but we need the .net. So you're going to need the .net uh, .dll, the metagen, and uh, it will create a log every time you run it. But Make sure you get the scripthookv.net. If you don't have that one downloaded, then your uh, spotlight will not work. And if you look in the INI, there's your controls, and you're good to go. Let's double check our startup.rphs. We have LSPD first response and police radar.dll. What did we forget to do? Ah, we didn't install the speed radar. Let's do that one really, really quick. I'm sorry it's taken so long um, for all of this, but better, uh, better safe than sorry, right? Let's do it. Spotlight and Corona. But speed radar. I'm sorry. It's over here. And extract it. And we have a PLD as well. That's that uh, player location. Um, let's do the speed radar one. Let's open that guy up. Because it goes in the plugins folder. And it's it's in, in, it's important that when we do you download the speed radar mod, look here in the start RPHS. He only has load plugin speed radar. So if you downloaded the speed radar and you threw that startup.rphs in there, Look what happens. It's going to overwrite the LSPDFR and the police radio. So those, none of that stuff's going to work until you tell Ragehook to load it. So I think a lot of people are installing the speed radar and getting completely screwed up because they override their startup.rphs, which load plug-in speed radar. All we have to do is just copy this information, and let's put that in our startup.rphs we already have. We don't, we don't need just that, right? It would screw everything up. So we did that. In the plugins folder, here's speedradar.dll and the INI. In our plugins folder, where we install the police radio, we'll paste it in there. There we go. So anything in the plugins folder, the startup.rphs is looking in there and loading that on uh, startup of uh, the rage hook. So we are pretty much done. Um, unless we want to do that, might as well. Let's just knock it out. Let's just knock out the PLD version. 
that's the one that shows you uh, where you're at on the screen, the street you're on, kind of like how ELS used to do that. So let's just do it really quick. Documentation, installation files, and media. Media shows you the pictures um, and blah, 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 blah. Documentation tells you how to install it. Installation files are, look at this, pld.asi. Very, very simple. What does that mean? We just take the pld.asi. We throw that in the main directory. That's it. Because if we have a script hook, then it's going to automatically open up an ASI folder. So that's, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. Okay. So we've installed a lot of different mods. And now we're starting to get to the point now where we need to have a script hook installed. So open 4.asi will work. So pld ASI will work. And any ASI we throw in here, because if you notice, by default, LSPDFAR did not ship with the um, the, sh uh, the script hook uh, 5. So let's just do that one real fast. It'll be the very last one, guys. I promise. It's very important that you have this because a lot of mods require script hook 5. So script hook 5 is in here. Let's look in here. We can look at the readme if we want to. The bin, blah, 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 blah. All you have to do is take these three files right here and move those into your main directory. That's all you have to do. Um, I wouldn't overwrite that. Well, they already have a D put. Yeah, let's go ahead and replace it. So there we go. D input 8.dll. Everything looks good. Let's go try everything out and make sure we didn't screw everything up, right? Let's double click LSPDFR. All righty. Let's see if we screwed anything up. Let's go here to, uh, we have our simple native trainers working. So let's go to vehicle options. Oh, no, sorry, not that. We'll go to vehicle spawning, emergency, police cruiser. There we go. We're in a police cruiser. Yay. Yay. And there's our siren that we changed out. We're going to just head down here and check out the buses and stuff. Look at that. We got a Penske truck right there. So that's, re that's good. We have the realistic textures are in. It's all sorts of stuff. And you can see our game is working. We hit left on the D-pad and we'll have uh, things working here. And uh, I'll show you in a second the reason why FinCone's script isn't working immediately in the police radio. But uh, we're just going to hang out here by the track. So if a train comes, we'll get to see it. So FinCone's script isn't opening, which is the left on the D-pad to open the police radio. We're going to hit F4 and open this guy up. We're going to hit load plug and hit tab space. Then we have uh, police radio. We just hit down on the arrow key. Police. Oh, sorry. We're down on the radio. What are you doing to me? Load. <laughs> load plug in space. I just like typing it out. PO uh, tab again. And we have that hit enter. And you have to do this twice, unfortunately. Load plug in. There we go. And then police radio again. There we go. And we'll know that it worked by hitting that unloaded the initializing screen. So we hit left. Let's see here. I'll know this. We hit left on the D-pad. Now we have the, the police radio working. See? Nice. Very cool. Let's do a plate check on somebody just to make sure it's working fine, which I'm sure it is. There it is. Can I get a damn 28 on a Regina? All right, cool. Worked. And here comes the train. There's the train. Look at that. Absolutely amazing. Union Pacific and look at all the cars. Well, that one's a it, it, it changes like it's it's all sorts of different ones. Oh, that guy had a felony warrant. Oh, well, well, guys, I hope that you really enjoyed this uh, tutorial. I know it was long, but I really wanted to make sure I went over everything um, so you guys can have the best experience with your Grand Theft Auto 5 and LSPD FAR and all the mods that go along with it. And uh, with that said, um, hit the like button if you liked it. Leave a comment below and uh, feel free to ask questions. Take care, guys.